<laughs> Let's uh, dive a bit into class balance because then oh yeah, open up discussion. Brrr, and let's go. And let's, go let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, so feeding a bit off of two weeks ago, uh, Ian mentioned that class balance is not only done off of pure numbers, but also community perception as well. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything you can either add to that or we can preview a bit coming up? And I want to kind of addendum a bit here. Um, there's some concern that we haven't we've kind of barely seen class tuning on 9.1. Obviously, some of the bigger numbers have been uh, pooped on just a bit as, as needed, you know, poor mages. But, um, but you know, for like a, a major patch, like you're saying, it doesn't really seem like we've gotten into the brunt of class tuning. And I know traditionally that's one of the things you guys do last, but there's concerns that, it, I think, that are like, well, you know, why are I we not getting I think they're not going to do too much so more tuning, testing actually. Them earlier so that they can make changes earlier and bounce it better in the long run. I think the amount of tuning they've done you know, so far, like, as end, of right now, is very normal. inevitably go in, uh, unbalanced when it hits live kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Uh, there's a lot to dig in here. <laughs> Do you want me to just kind of ramble for a bit? Because I can kind of speak to thoughts here in terms of specific changes, philosophy. We yeah, yeah. Been yeah let's, let, let's start with, with philosophy, and then we can get into what we're expecting for the remainder of like 9.1. And if I mean, even if there's any classes you can speak to words, <laughs> like AMZ for DKs or anything like that, then uh, feel free to jab away. Okay, so he's going right, to start totally. with AMZ. Uh, okay, cool. So... Yeah, I mean, tuning is never done, right? Like it's, and also it's an art. It's always changing. We're never happy. That's the look of a man that's about to make some class community so mad. Just look I'm at happy him. With class He's balance. just ready to do um, it. There's always something that we can improve. Um, we've made quite a few changes with the classes uh, already. He's um, going to do it. And to, <laughs> speaking to, you know, PvP for a second, there's a ton of, you know, upcoming PvP talent changes that have been made. You know, I think it's some of the most we've made in a long time. So if you're a pvp -er, um, you know, the goal there was to really, you know, use PvP talents as a way to shift to the meta, refresh how Season 2 feels. And there's been a lot of changes there, even more coming soon. I'm not sure if the Death Knight stuff is up on the PTR yet, but there's a substantial amount of stuff coming to Death Knight PvP talents, for instance. But I guess more speaking, you know, towards philosophy of just tuning and post-launch support. Okay. Um, yeah, like this is something that we've been trying to be a lot more active with post-launch, um, especially, you know, leading up to 9-1, like you mentioned, there's going to be a lot more to me. I'm actually going to stop before he goes on. I, 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 again, there's like a lot of stuff happening recently, some very warranted criticism of them. Not all of it I agree with, but like a lot of it I do. But like the whole expansion so far had, uh, that they've actually done, they've done more and in my opinion, better changes to class design mid-expansion than they've done in my memory. Now, why I mentioned to Slute, or he said, like, it seems like the brunt of the class tuning still hasn't come. I actually would argue that the amount of class tuning they've done from 9.0 to 9.1, just announced for the 9.1 PTR, is actually more than they do in most patches. And the reason why you remember more before was classes were naturally shuffled by things like tier sets. Or in the past, like last expansion, like, they would be shuffled by, like, you know, adding an extra row of Azerite. And then 8.2 shuffled things again with essences and 8.3 shuffled things again with corruption right like different classes had better benefits from different things so like that shuffled it but there's nothing like that yet there's no major new system that's changing it the changes they made before the world first race they said we wanted to make minor changes that won't really upset the meta on where classes stand uh but we want to do minor changes and then after the world first race is over and there's like a month through the raid like we'll make some more they'll make some bigger changes and then they did those later and the only changes they made was they nerfed dks from orbit and then they were still probably the best class for progression there and then they nerfed hunters a little bit which was necessary and then they nerf, well it was, it was the wrong nerf to hunters but it, it was fine because they were so strong uh and then they buffed warriors a little bit they buffed havoc like they they made small changes that actually like they didn't make dks the worst because it would have sucked for them to nerf a bunch of dks that all of our guilds prepared without us knowing any better right like it sucks to have like the rug swept out of you kind of or from under you and then they made a bunch of changes they actually made tank changes if you guys have played tanks for a long time they don't touch tanks ever they make tank changes twice in expansion historically in beta and around the 0.2 or 0.3 patch they do tank tuning and they never touch tanks outside of it and they've done it multiple times in the expansion so far before even the first major patch that has I'm not kidding you. That has never happened since I started playing the game, since Cataclysm. They've never done that. They've made constant tweaks to change. Like, I, I would say I would say their actual... Now, you could argue that things are still out of balance, and things are always out of balance. They have been for years. There's never a perfect balance, but I'd say their balance now is relatively as good as it is normally. Like, it's not out of whack. Like, the Holy Paladin Mythic Plus scenario and the 
you know, the fire mage and it, like the AOE cap is like a different wrench. Obviously the AOE caps dog shit, but like there's always something like that where something's really strong. But like generally speaking, the game is generally balanced. So yeah, the uh, mop balance. No mop is liked for different reasons, mainly for class design. The balance was the exact same there. Imagine saying balance was good when you saw like demo locks and Throne of Thunder and Affliction Locks after the eye level increase in Siege of Orgrimmar, or Feral Druids before the eye level increase in Siege of Orgrimmar. There's always been things out of balance. Um, but yeah, that I, I actually think they've been good with that, just just to make that clear, because I don't think that's been brought up. And that happens. There's still some stuff to come. You know, there's some Mistweaver numerical buffs happening. Um, there's other changes that are coming down the pipe soon. I'm not sure if some of the, you know, Holy Paladin damage tuning that has happened, I'm not sure if that's hit the PTR yet. Um, but really, I want to speak to just philosophy of post-launch and how we are, have been viewing that and kind of kind of changed our philosophy here a little bit over time. Um, but, you know, Nerf uh, we want to do man. more work once the game is out there. And we want to be a lot more active, especially early on, and, and be more hands-on with tuning um, early as people, you know, it's not quite established, you know, what the, the meta is, as it were. And also post-launch, right? Like, you know, re re reviewing... How our classes are, are looking and knowing that you know hey if i'm not doing so well we we are looking to you know buff under performers um pretty consistently throughout the course of a raid tier or a season um that's not something we've done as much in the past uh we try to, to be very careful with um nerfs uh, outside of that you know first couple of weeks um and we really just look to kind of buff under performers or we're usually very hands off with things that might change some of the more permanent choices you've made like there were some legendaries that are getting changed that you've probably seen there's some druid legendaries in 9-1 that are getting some adjustments because they were um you know kind of impacting the overall class balance but that's not you know you you spent soul lash what? crafting that thing that was something that you oh, went out I, and yeah, you got right. that was a reward we don't want to pull the rug he's, out talking, he's talking about bow? on that one and we want if we're going to make changes to that we want to make Talk sure there's a bow? long you know, lead time where you can see that coming. And especially with legendaries, since you have to upgrade new ones, um, that seems, you know, on a, on a big patch barrier, seems like a good time to revisit things like that. Um, but, um, you know, other things that we talk about a lot in terms of philosophy and tuning, um, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure that you and I have ever talked about this, but encounter design has a huge impact on the class mm. balance, right? Like, like, Absolutely. No exaggeration. We could literally touch nothing about our class tuning and looking at who is overperforming and or underperforming based on, you know, whatever metrics you're looking at. Correct. Might look completely different. Absolutely correct. Rate. No, what? What? It yes, but encounter design has a huge impact on the class mm. balance, right? Like, like, uh, no exaggeration. We could literally touch. Okay. He's exactly right, though. Besides the fact that my, like, uh, I don't know what happened, but. I think I press a mouse button. He's exactly right. The classes that people think are OP now, they could create a fight. And based on the what is important on those fights, people would think certain classes are great. He's exactly he's exactly right. The the M plus balance yeah, the rate design off of that. Or Remember how good design, one class wasn't and Zool and nothing else? Off of the rate design. <laughs> and then it got uh, obliterated okay. from the face of the and game. <laughs> Right, like four K no less stuff. Um, Just gone. The, it's been gone ever since. Uh, we we are constantly kind of communicating with encounter design and combat design. Um, we very frequently also just have kind of pillars, you know, like the staples of our raid design. Um, it's not a coincidence that almost every raid tier has what we call a patchwork fight, right? The single target, no ads. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, fuck usually yeah. Usually there's fewer mechanics. It's just like you know. Pump numbers. How That's hard new. Can you punch this? That's new. That has not been the case. That 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 what he's saying right now was not the case. There's plenty of raids in Legion and BFA that did not have the patchwork boss. That is a that that is noticeably a Shadowlands thing. Um, so I'm I'm very glad that they're the doing that. Um, that's not a coincidence, right? We always want to make sure that there are certain um, elements of our you know, combat design, class balance that we are making sure that we're testing within a specific raid tier so that we have a good um, variance there. Um, and then outside of that, like I said, we don't necessarily want to punish people who are maybe doing really well because of a, um, the way that a raid tier is designed, but the people who feel like they're underperforming and maybe for the exact same reason that they're underperforming, that doesn't really feel fair to that person to just be like, yeah, you just get to sit around for five months knowing that this raid tier just doesn't really lean into the strengths 
Um, and that's really... Okay, yeah, but it, speaking of subrogue, though, it is really hard to say, yeah, it would suck, like, people think a class is really good, but it's just because the fight is worked around it. Subrogue was used in, like, bolstering and tyrannical sometimes, or, like, like certain uh, keys in BFA in the first season where, like, you needed to burst down one big mob on top of another mob. Like, like in Siege of Boralus, you would pull, like, one of the big the big guys and you would just, like, subrogue would kill that guy and everyone else would AoE. And then, like, you used the, the subrogue on Zul, but then you played other rogue specs in the raid instead of sub. And you usually played combat rogue in mythic plus right so sub wasn't op but like sub was unique if i can make something out of this argument sub was uniquely great at zool and only zool in that raid and then you guys obliterated that spec for almost three years now so that definitely doesn't feel good i think like that spec is clearly missing its niche and it had a perfect one it was the only melee funnel spec or the only good one after they nerfed Fire Nova, and it's just gone for no reason, basically because you guys made an overreaction nerf based on a raid encounter, which you are saying you don't want to do now. The goal there is to make sure that those people um, know that we, you know, will make changes so that they can feel like they're being effective in, you know, whatever piece of content that they want to do, and if that means buffing, you know, Arms Warrior for the fourth time, <laughs> then that's something that. <laughs> we'll, we'll look at don't forget blood dk yeah. um, well, hey blood dk got bust man yeah. And then, and then yeah well i mean give it give it a couple more and then we'll talk uh, <laughs> a couple more oh, okay so so now, now that okay yeah also on the blood dk thing the main problem with them is their single target is bad uh obviously raid speaking uh when you guys keep buffing all of their spells and abilities by six percent you're ignoring their auto attack and that's like their main single target thing so gotta buff that too with all these percent buffs and it would actually make a pretty big difference so far so we've established this kind of philosophy. So that being said, on on your guys' radar, is, is there any snippet or preview? Like, what do you guys feel right now is maybe overperforming generally, underperforming? Uh, you know, we don't need specifics here. Like, hey, this is getting a 10% damage nerf or something. But, you know, are there some specs and, and classes we can kind of expect to see notes on soon enough on PTR? So there's been, I mean, like I mentioned, there's been a bunch already. I could go look at the notes, but there's... I guess there's different types of problems here, right? There's, hey, this is just a tuning problem. We just need to buff the numbers on something here, you know. Uh, but there's also issues where we feel like, you know, yes, we could buff the numbers here, but all that would be doing is pushing other people out of the space. And maybe we're actually missing, um, you know, maybe we're actually, there's some design space that we need to explore here. So an example here is uh, Holy Priests, you know, we redesigned one of their buttons because we felt like, yes, we could buff Yes, we could tune up Holy Priest, but we also felt like, uh, you know, what is um, gonna... there was an opportunity to create a new niche for them that maybe... I fucking love that he said that. I'm so glad they feel that way. I feel like they get trapped so far into seeing classes not being represented, and they're like, let's just give them a percent buff. But what they don't get is that what they're missing, what classes are brought for, is because of their niches, right? Like, whole, like for a long time, Resto Shaman's healing has been very similar to re really, this is true, to like Resto Druids, to Mistweavers, uh, to Holy Priests, sometimes less or more depending on the raid, but it's been very similar. They just have things that they don't, and that's it. So giving those classes that aren't brought more things until they're brought, make those abilities good. Make Symbol of Hope fucking broken for a raid, and then maybe tune it back a little bit, but at least seeing some other representation and more creativity would be nice and not just percent buffs, right? Like, especially with healers, which I'm assuming he's going to get into in a second, like that, it like the percent buffs clearly for multiple years now have not helped Rester Druid, Mist Reaver, and Holy Priest. They just don't have enough. They don't have enough. Um, was, would be able to prop them up and make them have some unique utility that is, you know, just for Holy Priest and makes them feel cool. Um, so that's something that we've already been working on. Like I mentioned, Mist Reaver, there's some numerical changes coming um, I, I don't know too many other specifics that are still coming down the pipes, um, but like I said, that's also something that we know is never done, right? That's not something that if we don't, if you don't see it, Mistweaver don't need numerical buffs. They could, they could actually use an entire other raid cooldown, either healing or a like damage reduction thing, just something like they need something else.
They don't need numerical buffs. In the next week, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't come later or isn't on our radar. Okay. So so there's there's nothing on, like you mentioned, Holy Paladins or... Yeah, I mean, sorry. Yes, those are getting changes. Like Holy Paladin damage, for instance, is getting some adjustments to it. I believe AMZ is something that you mentioned, yes, that we're yeah, still Mike looking into. Right. We, I'm not going to talk about the Holy Pally thing. We, we went over those changes. But if you guys were not here for that, TLDR, I turned on my stream today, obviously insanely clean, just came out of a fresh long shower. And then my stream was just spamming Holy Pally rip, Holy Pally dead. And I kid you not, they only said that because they read nine lines of text. I promise you didn't even read it. And then they were like, Holy Pally is dead. Holy Pally will still be, I mean, at those, they'll still be a top, top tier healer, like just straight up. Obviously, some testing will need to be done there, but I think it was good because they nerfed their damage. It's going to change their play style a little bit. They're going to be a little bit more mana heavy, but like right now, mana is irrelevant for a Holy Paladin, not just doing damage the whole fight. So I don't think that'll matter either. So uh, it, it, you'll have to see it over long raid encounters, but Holy Paladin, if you guys play Holy Paladin or if you are looking to hate on Holy Paladin and want to see them burn because they've taken your spot in whatever group you think you're supposed to be in, uh, they'll still be pretty good. Adding a, a cap to the amount of damage that that can absorb, okay. um, things like that are are always in the works. All right. And anything else notable, or we'll have to wait um, and see. I mean, there's been stuff that you've seen, I believe, right? Like there were nerfs to Spirit Shell. Um, and, and and just to cap off that point for some people that I see in chat, they had don't even if you're a Holy Pally main, don't be. You can be a Holy Pally main. You can be a Holy Pally simp. Don't be a delusional Holy Pally main that thought that what your class was doing was okay. Because it wasn't okay. And now it's more okay. But it's still really good. So fucking relax. It's fine. But like you mentioned, Fire Mages got kind of <laughs> uh, touched a bit there. Right. There's also opportunity. You know, there's also times, and like I said, this is... We talk about, you know tuning and class balance did you say something about amz whether or not we think it's a i know he said something like we're working on amz but i remember i saw a wowhead post i saw he said it after the pally okay i don't care about going back and finding it so when wowhead was machine gun tweeting uh about the thing i heard that he mentioned again just very briefly i'm not going to rewind for it because obviously that hasn't worked so far and also that I believe what he says is he just doubles down on what Ian said, which he believes they're just going to put an absorption cap on it. That is, do not do that, do that, do that, do that, do that, do not do that, do not do that, do not do that. That is so bad. There, there are, there are so like if in a situation where it's like bad in raid, where you like put it down on a whole raid and it like basically any raid damage happens and it goes away like it used to, it is so bad. Not it's bad for so many reasons too. It's just that you can have so many AMZs right now, and it it's a two minute cooldown, and it lasts for fifteen seconds, and it's huge. Make it longer, reduce the reduce the time that it's up. Maybe nerf its efficacy a little bit, not to ten percent, but maybe to fifteen. The absorption cap thing is just the weirdest change. It is so bad. Do not do it unless the absorb cap is huge. Right, because like we don't know exactly what it's going to be, but there has been an absorb cap already on AMZ in the past. That's like literally what the ability was, and it was basically useless. There was some mechanics where it like snap reduced and it was okay, but it's basically it was bad. Uh, yeah, I, I please don't do that. Okay. Um, all right, I, I kind of want to chat. Please, no bong cloud AMZ fixes. No, there doesn't need to be a sated debuff when you use AMZ. That makes no sense for anything in the game except for lust. That you don't, it doesn't need to be blood decay only. Even if it was, you know, DPS DK would still be really good. It doesn't just no guys just fucking put down I the dig bomb. a bit deeper then, um, because this conversation with Mike and Ian two weeks ago kind of sparked a bit with AMZ, and you know AMZ is going to get gisted. Oh, actually, before I do that, oh. the Holy Paladin nerfs coming down the drain. Are they class side or are they Venthyr Halid <laughs> ground side? <laughs> So I would have to go look at the specifics there, but there is a bit of adjustment there. One, for sure, there's some Venthyr changes with Ashen Hollow in there. Okay, so um, I didn't need to rewind. To, it was in the future. Um, kind of holy power generation and where your healing is coming from. Fucking I think right now, baiting something chat. that I feel like isn't 
always the case no, is as a holy paladin you're like future. why am i casting holy light why am i casting flash of light um so we are doing some pretty major adjustments and buffs to things like flash of light and holy light when especially when it comes to like their infusion of light mm, procs mm. um so it's it's again kind of a buff nerf thing there where the goal is you know this specific case of venthyr paladin can, guys it's the holy law paladin can put out some major damage law. but then also we want to make sure that you know they're they're single target healing is really effective because that's one of those things that when you think about holy paladins you think about bombing those big heals out right okay um so to, to backtrack a second so i, I want to kind of just get into a bit of nitty-gritty we don't have to go too crazy here Nitty -gritty. Uh, you know we discussed about amz and like some of the different strengths and and of the classes that are brought in are oftentimes utility based right yeah, so things absolutely. like amz rallying cry um but i, I want to uh, for lack of a better term, harp a bit on unique buffs and debuffs, the passive mm -hmm. ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Battle shout, fort, you know, magic, physical debuff. Dude, fucking cage match him, Sloot. All buffs are bad. All the class buffs, all the fucking, dude, cage buffs, match, match him, cage match him, cage match him. Is there plans to take a look at these, uh, to eliminate them in any way? Yes, Sloot. To homogenize <laughs> them a bit. Um, because I, I find it a bit weird, at least in the world of melee and tanking, mm -hmm. you know, if, let's say, brewmasters and windwalkers are underperforming, right? Just random scenario here yep. and you're trying to min max your raid comp it feels bad to have to bring one of them just because you know the net amount that they bring to the raid is some passive buff for touching a mob um so is, is there and, and the look at that smile he's about to fucking shut us all down take it, it easy on me mr morgan kind of weird and raiding potentially you know things like uh mythic plus vengeance was not only dominant for so long just because of its strength but the fact that it also brought five percent magic debuff to everything mm -hmm. on top of its strength so is there any plan to kind of share the love or or iterate mm -hmm. upon these because great like question after expansion we've gone from eliminating them all together making to bringing them back yeah dude when i make a raid i want to bring the 20 best classes for that fight not the 14 or 13 best classes for that fight after i've brought the seven for some reason required raid classes that you have to bring one of and every other class doesn't have that benefit or in some some of their cases no other benefit to put them in that slot all right don't let me down, Morgan. Uh, making two or three classes have them, etc. So, where do you guys stand on these these passive kind of no action input needed buffs and debuffs? Right. Uh, again, there's a lot to dig into there. I'll try to keep it. Sure. You know, yeah, kind guess, of yeah, like, so have to, a bit to get through here, but yeah, exactly. You have, you have like six more pages of questions we gotta get to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, speaking more broadly, right, philosophically, I think. Some of these examples we've talked about, you know, Rally, AMZ, some of the buffs that you're providing. Yes, I think of these they as, suck. You know, these are successful examples. Ooh. Successful examples in my book, right? Like we want to keep finding places to give people unique tools, nope. uh, unique utility, and nope. to make them feel viable, right? Like I think it's a much more interesting place to live. It is. No, it is. It is. It is an interesting place. Oh, no, 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 no. It, I know he said rally and AMZ. I'm saying I'm oh, okay. Okay, yeah, 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 wait, 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 yeah. He was specifically talking about rally and AMZ. I actually, okay, so like yes, in a situation where every class brings their little thing that might be good for a specific fight versus others, that's nice. But what sucks is when that's that parity isn't there across of all classes, and it's not. Like for example, he's saying rally and AMZ are good cases, but. What's not a good case is like Arcane Intellect or Fort or like any of those buffs, especially with the removal of scrolls. It's just so ridiculously restrictive. They've just add more restrictions to getting into a raid. Um, so I'm, I'm so okay. He thinks Rally and AMZ are good. Let's let's, let's listen us, to the full take. Um, when you can look at every class in your raid and th think about the thing that they're doing that's really cool, some powerful, um, you know, like you said, powerful buff or unique utility, and we want every class to be present to feel like they're you know bringing something cool like that to the raid um it's a bad example you know this is maybe a bad example of hyperbole but um if everyone's doing the same thing has the same buffs is doing the same damage or just pushing yeah that would that would be worse get the same damage. if they just made every single class in a raid have a raid buff similar to you know arcane intellect or something to where it was like you know you just brought at least one of every class because you had to. That would be even worse than what it is now. It's like the less there is of that, the better. Image, you know, I think that's a much less interesting place to live than feeling like, oh man, I want them for this reason. I want them for this reason. I'm really happy this person's here. Um, and I know that there is more work to be done on our part with creating those unique elements 
Um, Because in a game this large, and like you said, we've gone through a lot of iterations over the years, sometimes carving that space out can be difficult. Um, Symbols of Hope is an example, the redesign that we're doing for 9-1 of where we're trying to add, you know, a unique element to that class and and or spec in this case. Um, That makes you so like, oh man, that's really cool. I'm glad we have that person here. That that changes the way I interact with my stuff also. Um, Those are some of the most fun things for me is when you say, oh man, this class plus this class lets us do this thing that I wouldn't have even thought of. And the common torques there. Yeah, I mean, it is um, cool. That open up possibilities for strategy and mastery and you know, arena comps and stuff like that is where some of the most exciting, you know, I'm gonna let him finish. Um, comes for me. Okay. No, you know, I, I mean, I, I do agree. Like, I think like small things, right? Like, I don't think every class should have nothing, right? Like, that's a fucking shitty game. Like, the fact that warlocks and like rogues with mind numbing or whatever can like can bring or numbing poison can can bring things to a raid that like are small it just has to be small things that you could potentially do without but excel in a situation not things like makes your entire raid do five percent more damage things like that it's boring and it's like just weird you know what i mean and the fact that they that the and the fact that they removed the things in the game that made it feel less bad to not have those things it just feels so much worse right like wind walking yeah Exactly, like Windwalkers making all of your melee passively move ten percent faster, things like that, like that, and and even even to some case raid buffs. I'm not advocating for them removing all raid buffs. I think it's fine that they have like uh like ra- sorry raid cooldowns, raid cooldowns specifically. But I just think other classes should have more things. You know, that's all. I don't think every class should be the same. I don't think everything should be homogenized. I don't think everyone should bring a buff. I just think it should be... I, I like I like the idea they have. I just wish it was done better. I know that sounds stupid because I'm I'm not a game dev and I'm not saying I could do it better. I just wish... I, I wish it was actually true that like there were these small niches that you could bring classes for because that's true for like half the classes in the game and uh, there's a lot of classes and specifically specs that don't, right? Like look at Feral and Moonkin. Like, you're bringing a Feral or a Moonkin to a raid. Forget the melee range thing. In fact, recently, for whatever reason, maybe partially my fault, that, that argument has been overblown. But the main thing is, like, with a Moonkin, you get Roar, all the Druid utility, and Innervate. And a Feral, you get Roar and no Innervate. But why, right? Like, why? Like, literally, why does Feral not have Innervate? Why? It's the same thing. You, you, can, turn into a little, you can turn into a little owl and cast stuff. Like, like those classes, some specs and classes are just left behind. That's the problem. Okay. I ramble. I ramble. Does that make sense? It, no, like it, it makes sense, but I, it's just, I totally agree with you. It's just, you're, you're trying to shove 36 specs into 20 spots. More, more, more namely, you're Correct. trying to shove six specs into two spots, six specs into four spots, and 24 specs into 14 spots. Let, let alone melee is, is usually more underwhelming, but that was discussed two weeks ago. So the problem is, like, I, I find it almost impossible. Let's go. Like, how are you going to balance something like Rallying Cry and AMZ? Uh, and rallying cry minds you on a class that already brings five percent AP versus like rogue, <laughs> you know, or, or, or like or like ret paladin, you know, that yeah. in a blue yeah. moon. Maybe I've like ha ha ha. You're laughing and smiling at us, but also, y- like really though, a cool immune situation. But yeah, yeah. things like rallying cry are globally awesome, and mm-hmm. so I, I feel like I I get the vision, and I and I, I definitely agree with that. But I feel like the spread of love amongst the specking classes is just not very well balanced Fucking right now at all. Beautiful, beautiful job. Sloop bags last thirty to forty five seconds were like preach esque. He just fucking, you know, he just he just did it. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned, there's there's definitely more work to be done there. I just wanted to speak to kind of like the vision of I would He's rather live it. in the space where everything has everyone has something cool. And there's lots of competition for who do we want to bring because everyone does such cool stuff than going back to a place where everything was essentially homogenized. Mm-hmm. Nobody did anything unique. No, um, no, no. You took that the wrong way. And there wasn't Wait. a lot of, you know, fun interactions that were involved there. Um, it's, <laughs> I was laughing about this the other day. You mentioned rogues just now. And, you know, that's such an interesting one because, again, it speaks to the buff shark kind of interactions between encounters and combat Mm -hmm. because you know can it wasn't that long ago right when people were stacking tons of rogues and rogues were one of the most you know uh, like viable melee dps in 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 raids and i was thinking back on like what was what was the cause of that right like how many rogues did you bring to you know some of heroic and or mythic end bosses and 
uh, in, in because you made everything soakable and cloak is on a two minute CD. Past raid tiers. And a lot of that is really just that on the encounter. Like every raid until you stopped doing that for years now. Side, we tried to shore up, you know, some of. That's why every single raid had shit you soaked and then you just had rogues do it because they had faint, old faint with no CD and they had cloak and they had like, they could like drink a potion and shit and heal themselves. And they were like unkillable, right? And they had cheat death. That's why they had all those things in one package and that was in every raid. And then you stopped doing that. After Tomb of Sargeras, they notably said, rogues are too much, and uh, we're not going to make raids like this anymore. And admittedly, they didn't. Uh, in all of Antorus, there was like basically no immunities. In fact, they basically made immunities not work in the entire raid, right up until the very less, the very uh, lightly tested mythic phase of Argus, where immunities were insanely important. That was an oversight. They said it was an oversight. Throughout all of last expansion, was there immunity situations? Yes. Nihilotha, most notably... They, you know, they, they mentioned as well, and by the way, rogues weren't even meta for that, just to even make the point even more, uh, you know, people just started moving away from classes that seemed safe and more that ones that did more damage. Also, rogues used to be like routinely top, top tier dam in a raid, and that just hasn't been true in like a very long time, actually. They've been like near upper middle average, their best single target spec, but they do, they, they've lost their sub niche. There's very few combat or uh, outlaw scenarios in raid, uh, and assassination is basically just like do or die. It's extremely good single target, or it's not, and its raid spot is just really flimsy. And they clearly need something in PVE to bridge the gap. Smoke bomb is an answer, uh, uh, but I'm I, I again he he mentioned the point of homogenization. If you go back to just giving every class a defensive cooldown, it becomes the same. It can be something else. I don't know what it is. I don't design video games, but. There's a reason that rogues used to be brought and they don't be now because one of their specs had crazy niche. You got rid of it because of literally one raid fight. Um, and their tuning just hasn't been at the top and they've been entirely reliant on it since you stopped taking immunities out of the raid. So The quote unquote cheese that you could do where you basically would like delete an ability because you have enough rogues and you stack mm. you know, cloak at the same time. Um, and that used to be like a, a, a niche strength of theirs. And just by changing how we kind of approach immunities on the encounter side of things, and yep. know, maybe we just have more targets on that ability, um, you can't just delete the ability anymore. So that, yep. that was a space where rogues don't excel at where okay. they used to. And maybe we need to find a new There was a reason that rogue be brought raid utility -wise and they don't like be that, now. Perhaps some kind um, of for them to bring smoky some, bomb or some something. Kind of a, a bomb maybe. Yeah. A smoky bomb. Like yeah. Um, so that's the second time in a dev interview, again, while very, very widely smiling, a dev has mentioned to an interviewer, a clouded interviewer, that smoke bomb is kind of the thing. That's the second time. I'm not saying, I, I'm not, I'm not saying it's coming back, but they've both mentioned it kind of unprompted a little bit. Uh... So maybe maybe that's a thing, dude. I feel like, dude. I feel like if Rogues got old Smoke Bomb back, I feel like that would be very very strong. Uh, so then leading into some raid stuff. So we're just gonna scramble around here a bit. Um, any thoughts about diminishing the power or or the amount of power that are brought forth from BOEs? Oh, uh, <laughs> tell me. BOEs, yes, so yes, 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 uh, less yeah, of them. Way. Less of them are rid of what's, them. What's like the philosophy? Less Again, of them are rid of them. Dude, crazy I'm going to machine gun that. Through here, but in general, what's the plan yep. for BOEs for Sanctum? What's the philosophy on BOEs, mm -hmm. etc.? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing BOE raid drops for like a very Yeah, long I know you're not going to get rid of it, but make um, less of them. And we plan to continue doing that in Sanctum and Domination. Um, we just feel like we missed the mark on tuning on a couple avenues in uh. Council Mathria, right? Like for one... Um, I think uh, we're looking to reduce the number of slots that are not 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 just remove removing you know how much of your paper doll can be filled up by going to the auction house I think is is one way where that we're approaching this yes additionally I think the drop weight rate goes a long way right like in past raids you were excited if you saw a single boe in your raid week where in it was common to get multiple multiple BOEs like on the way to a boss <laughs> so I think just like the tuning there okay and... no 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 wait a second wait a second wait a second he said that they were going to reduce the overall power gain from BOEs so instead of four slots two to three but then he said 
And I'm like, okay, thank you, smiling man. You just saved me like hundreds of millions of gold. And then he said, yeah, but we're going to make them so much harder to find. You guys know how supply and demand works, right? Oh, we're going to have to do it again. We're going to have, he, dude, it's so bad. No, okay, wait. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to press play, and he's going to go. He's going to do some old shit, like, from the 2000s and go, psych. The slot availability will go a really long ways. Um, but, you know, philosophically, we he didn't say it. like DOEs. We like, you know, that they're a part of the rating economy. You know, like, when you get one, it's really cool to either, one, equip it, or two, you know, you can sell that, and it help pay pays for your guild's consumables, for your repair costs. Yeah, man. I yeah I can't yeah um, we think that part of the economy is really cool and help healthy. Um, we just missed the mark on the tuning. Okay, you so, did. It was funny that they didn't get it because they like we were going into this raid thinking, man, BOEs will never be as impactful. There was multiple BOEs from last from Nihilotha that had that had cor like insane corruption. Like the power level from just what was on those items was just so huge. And we're like, yeah, man, we paid more gold in that raid than we ever have. And then they made main stat better than it's been in almost six years. And they had four slots on every raider. I mean, I, I, at least it's still fine, though. I, I think the power... I still think, even though it sucks because the BOEs are going to be more pricey now, I still think it's going to be uh, better because you won't have so much power level from your BOEs. And they buffed raid gear, too. So, like, I don't, I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. Have you paid off your debt? Yeah, we we paid off all of the couple hundred mil in like I think like five or six weeks after the raid was over. By any we've any just been stacking gold, doing getting, like three or four, Sanctum, three four. or four Denathrius mythic full ten out of tens every Sorry, week. No. I okay. can follow up with you, but, but, but something less sure. than four, probably, hopefully. <laughs> I, I don't know the top of my head. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's all good. R raid gearing in general, um, uh -huh. it it obviously was maybe a bit too low at the start. Uh, you guys bumped it up a piece per boss. Yes. Uh, we still yes. don't have bonus rolls. Um, and notably, a lot of people have asked as well from the community, we're moving away from what seemingly was a pretty successful implementation of weapon tokens. So mm -hmm. um, so I guess a, a, a couple question. of starters here. A, why are we moving away from weapon tokens? B, as a result of moving away from weapon tokens, there's concern that straight up some classes and don't have weapons don't off the last boss. Weapons from off the last, last two bosses. bosses. Yep. Is this going to be changed? And uh, see anything you want to add about how you guys feel about raid gearing in general moving forward. Mm -hmm. You love these like multi-parters, huh? Uh, <laughs> also, yeah, just, let like, me sit back and relax, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Just let Morgan ramble for a while. Um, sorry, and I just looked up uh, the BOEs. I think that it should be two or three. Two, or three. Okay. Two sure dose. Than what we saw in that, right? right. Um, two, yeah, AKA, so not three. So what, what, why tokens? Um, so... There was a specific problem we were trying to solve in Nathria that kind of led us down the the road of explore of creating the token, um, which was, hey, we're gonna you know we're fighting Denathrius and we have these really yep. really awesome looking covenant weapons that we want to award you from the raid. Yep. Um, how do we make that make sense, right? Like if you killed Denathrius, why in the world would he have like an Arden wield staff on him? Like that just doesn't. Jive, oh yeah, that would not, not be very epic. That we usually try to pursue, right? Would like not when you be fight very Sylvanas epic. and punch Sylvanas, you will take her bow off of her yes corpse. Yes, corpse quote quote quote. Um, but oh. the uh, <laughs> yo, the, um, you know, the goal with the tokens was She's hey, dead. how do we deliver these items that feel like they're very different fantasy? Wait um, a second. You will take her bow off of her corpse. Wait, but then he says, in this exact moment, he goes, take the bow off of her corpse. And then his eyes grow wide. He starts sweating. And then feverishly, he goes, uh, quotes dead. R listen. Corpse, quote, quote, quote. Like he fucking stuttered. She's dead. Um, she's but, dead. Oh. She's the, uh, dead. The, <laughs> oh, she's um, dead, dude. She's going to die. You know, the goal with the Let's tokens go, dude. Was, hey, how do we deliver these items that feel like they're very different fantasy? Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Dude, look at my camera. Dude, Lore was in the room and Lore, Lore hears him say that. Wait, oh, back up. Yeah, to pursue, right? Like when you fight Sylvanas and punch Sylvanas, Here's Lore. you will take her bow off of her corpse. Corpse, quote, quote, quote. Um, but he, looked, he, did that. The, uh, he, he looked right the, at him. Um, 
you know, the goal with the tokens was, hey, how do we deliver these items that feel like they're very different fantasy? I don't know why he would um, be in the attic, but off of the same box, and that's why we kind of pursued the token element of that. Um, also, tokens. I mean, while they were cool in some uh, avenues, it also I think caused us some problems in Castle Nathria, where you know there was the weapon boss, right? Like mm. Nathrius was, do you want the weapon? Here's the boss, um, and it. I know, feel like that was fine for as much proliferation throughout the raid where you would have seen. I actually like that. I like in previous that. raid tiers where it's like, cool, I can get a boss or weapon off of you know maybe boss three, and then there's another boss drop or weapon drop off boss seven, and there's also a boss drop off of Denathrius um, versus um, you know where we ended up in Castle Nathria where you had a lot of people you know even in my own raid group they were like, wow, am I just never going to get a weapon? Right. And it's like, well, for one, <laughs> they're less available, uh, and two, yeah, so. You know, I, that, that was a solution to a specific problem I tried to solve. I see. Um, no, I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? The, the, the second part, yeah, I'll, I'll try to break this up a bit more for you. Um, the, the second part was um, currently, as the loot table stands, uh, I don't know if it's placeholder or not, that's what we're going to find out. Um, there's some weapon types that just don't drop from the last two bosses. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. That's so happened in the past multiple that times, don't have too. The highest potential eye level of weapon, which is causing right. some rowdiness in the crowd. Some, some consternation. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, what does that the mean? The layout, as you, you have know, seen none it, of us is know what that means. Intentional, uh, and it's mostly finished. Like, maybe there's a couple of adjustments, but not <laughs> regarding what we're talking Look at his face. Right Look at Sloot's face. <laughs> So the loot layout. Oh as, my god, that is such a fucking good meme. Holy shit! Ooh. Right there, and then look—it's about to start. There's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god, dude, dude, salute! That is actually comedy gold. That is actually gold. Holy fuck, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I miss the first face too? <laughs> There's one. There's step one. Now he needs to let his face rest so he can he can find he can land he can Gosh, land like it and there we go. And there's the pain. All right, very good. That's a that's a step. Yeah, step one. Cringe. He lets it hold for a second, thinks about it again, and hits the fucking. And then he leans his head back. A of adjustments, but not regarding. Oh, even more. Step three. So they've done this in the past. In fact, it's pretty common for raids that have end bosses and second to last bosses have higher eye level loot also for what it's worth in that argument i think that's good they're obviously harder uh in rpgs you should always be rewarded with better things for doing harder things and those bosses are clearly harder than the rest of the raids historically uh it's been happening for a while but i will say that the classes that don't have a weapon off the last boss while it is weird and i think it's bad i will say i don't think it's like a huge doomer situation where like they're just completely ignoring those specs and hopefully the reason isn't because of like lore or some shit but it's it's more so that those classes in fact some of the better classes in the game are ones without best weapons off the last boss they're just like they're uh they're usually like just fine like his like i think it was like last raid i think it was like moonkins and priest didn't have one both those classes were good uh so who knows it's also the same in like archimond archimond was the same thing what we're talking about right now um and again i think this kind of speaks to they they tune around no, that. i think there's pros they've they've e sorry to pause again but like they, they they have actually stated in blue posts before that before this patch comes out we feel like we want to buff these classes so that they at least in the past they have done class tuning because because of that like they have buffed classes to make up for the fact that they have a lower eye level weapon and cons to each of these right like having your weapon on the last boss is is cool in that um yeah i can get a higher item level version of it though but yeah i think that's a what lot i care people, about you know especially when we talk about for instance mythic rating people think it's a given that your mythic guild is just going to clear the raid um but there's a whole lot of rating guilds out there that never kill that's true you know, that end boss on whatever difficulty that it may be oh wait no 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 are pretty significant what are you gonna... jump in difficulty so um you know, for someone like you, maybe it feels like a given that you're going to get that. But for someone else, it's like, ah, man, we don't usually kill the end boss. So I don't even have a shot at getting my weapon versus the people. Wait, so you're saying because not everyone clears the raid that you want your BIS weapon in the raid to drop on an earlier boss so everyone's available to it, even though some classes it's at the end? Well, okay, well, if that's true, then why is that true for some rather than others? Not to mention that 
every single one of those classes that has a weapon off of the end boss or second to last boss also has one off of like the first couple bosses at a lower eye level. The, by the way, the same eye level as the max eye level that the classes who get excluded can get. So like, yeah, it might have like slightly worse secondaries or something, but like people who are going to be getting their weapons off some of the earlier bosses. So, you know, this is this is how we built bosses for many, many tiers, you know, um, and that's true. They've, they've done this a lot that there's something that you're excited about on the last few bosses. Um, but I don't think that necessarily always needs to be a weapon, right? Maybe it's a trinket or something else that you're really excited about. Yeah, but all the cl yes, loot, exactly right. Yeah, but those classes with the weapons off the last bosses can also get that trinket. So okay. yeah, that's kind of where, where our heads are at on that one. How, how come you guys, or, or did you ever consider making it Nathria style, not from a weapon token perspective, but making Ooh. everybody have a first eight bosses version of weapon and a last two bosses version of weapon? Kind of please the whole audience. Exactly, great. Oh, fuck um, yes, loot. That's interesting. Uh, that's something- Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. We, have we done that in the past? I mean, you just did it in Athria. Ish, yeah, I guess that's fair. But yeah, a lot of this kind of gets to, you know, <laughs> uh, loot e equity or equi equitability. Um, we don't want to do the same thing every time. Uh, we think there's a lot of oh different approaches to God. the itemization. Oh, and ultimately, he is. you know, making sure that we're spreading it out, the progression across the full raid will be equivalent for everyone, right? Okay. And it's just a matter of, you know, what makes sense to drop my weapon here? Um, Bro. And it's more of it. Bro, that, this question has to, this is the exact question you say in an interview where at the end of it, you're like, who? A case by case basis of, okay, cool. In this raid, we're fighting this boss in boss three and he should have, you know, the two handed ax because he's wielding a bad, uh, awesome looking two handed ax. Okay, also, also, why do you guys get so wild? This guy's fine. That was a really bad answer, but yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys fucking pop off, dude. And I want that to drop. Um, so it That's just bad, makes though. a lot of sense for him to have that loot there. A lot of this, um, you know, loot layout, as it were, is really kind of enforced by, you know, what your expectation as a player would be. Okay. Uh, we don't want to subvert that. Like, oh man, awesome axe. Well, we, you know, said we're not going to drop the axe here. We said we're going to drop it on the end boss because of, you know, just some previous plan that we made. Right. Okay. What? Um, is I just want to say I fundamentally disagree with that design decision. Okay, wow. Okay, so they're thinking too much. They probably think, like, why would it make sense for Sylvanas to drop a one-handed weapon? She, like, has a dagger and a, and a bow or something. Like, yeah, the lore reasons make sense, but, like, people play this game seasonally. Like, they play to either, like, get the max gear in the season or play as well as they can. I think it's at least somewhat acceptable if you very vocally tune the classes that aren't getting bis weapons, which by the way, weapons are like pretty important. If if people are six eye levels behind on their main weapon, you really need to make sure that you tune those classes accordingly. They have in the past. This has happened in many raids, by the way. This is not new. This is not a new Shadowlands thing. In some of your favorite expansions, uh, the end boss has has not dropped it. The highest eye level weapon was not available to you, but was available to another class. It's happened, but they vocally balanced around it. I just think I think in this scenario, they're they're making the mistake of thinking too much about what makes sense for a boss to drop and not understanding how people like play games in 2021. Because wait, okay, so the only question is PvP, so technically there is a PvP weapon, but I know they reduced the requirement for it to 2100. So does 2100 get, does 2100 next patch, because of the PvP eye level reductions, right, it actually, it won't be what would be 233 this time, right? They changed PvP as well. So like as it stands right now, let's just use the current eye levels as an example, not the new ones, so it's more relatable. There is no, if, if the next raid was this raid, certain classes would not have a weapon that is 233 at all. You would be able to get 226 from a mythic boss, and then some classes in the game would have 233, and you would be stuck at 226. Dude, that that is just bad. That's bad. That's bad. It's objectively bad, too. So what classes are left out? One hand, agi, and strength users. So basically, every tank except for blood decay non-rogue agi 
one hander, so monk, frost decay, single minded fury warrior, two handed agi. That that that's a mistake. That's a that's a shaman DHs. It's like a good ten specs in the game of the thirty six that exist that will just th almost almost thirty three percent of all specs in the game will not have six or seven eye level lower weapon just for the whole patch you will just never be able to have the weapon that someone else gets but i mean so th so like i said this isn't i mean that's like i said if they balance around it i guess if they buff them it's just still lame though they've done it in the past and they've balanced around it but i, I just i i just I, I think it's just such a i think it's too far in favor of what should make sense in a raid and not like what makes sense for making a game very strange there, uh, just real quick, I don't have to rant on this one or ramble on this one. Uh, is there any change to the drop amount? Or are we still looking at four pieces per boss? No bonus rolls or anything like that? Yeah, um, we made that change, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, kind of halfway through the tier, and we felt like that kind of hit the sweet spot. Okay. Um, we maybe sure. went a little bit too far, but we're pretty happy overall with where that landed. Okay. Um, and then the last, last big meta issue that I have to ask, uh, well, we'll, we'll skip past some of these, but this one is definitely was okay. a very popular here we go. community opinion. And I know here you're we go. on here too. I wanted to tackle it. Let's go. Uh, there's, there's feelings in the community that oh, a lot shit. of feedback is bypassed from oh. alpha beta into the X1, X2. And then eventually it feels like what a lot of people have suggested finally gets implemented in like the X3 patch. And it, it makes... Some people feel like, well, why are they doing this now? We suggested this for months and months and months. Um, is there, okay. you know, how do you guys view that kind of feedback? Like, do you agree with it at all? Uh, is there something internally we don't know it's a about? a really it, good question. As though, he's going to dodge like it? I just wonder how much he's going to dodge but it. You guys obviously weren't ignoring us, but you had your own path of going forward through all the major patches. Um, it's definitely something that sparked, uh, I wouldn't say just now. Uh, obviously, it's a thing now, too, but... Take some balls to ask that question, by the came way. Up with, uh, if you remember, essences, he asked it pretty course, well, though. You know, account wide <laughs> essences was a meme for months and months. Finally, <laughs> you guys made it account wide. You know, no, it it's not like, last oh, interview. Why, why He'll get more interviews. Uh, why don't they listen to us when it first happens, etc.? So, I'm um, kind of curious to hear your guys' feedback internally. Is he going to do a shark impersonation? You view this kind of, you know, disappointment, outrage, anger, whatever it may be, from certain parts of the community when when this seemingly happens sometimes. Um. You leave the short answers for last, huh? I, I said I said we had a couple short ones and then one big one. Uh, I mean, you know, ultimately we're trying to make the best game we can, right? Like, it, it, there's there's definitely nothing that we're saying like, well, let's save that for later because we think we should wait to make the game better till mm -hmm. later, right? Like, we're always looking to make. Um, to try to achieve the goals I agree that we with set that. Out to achieve with whatever system that we're No, introducing. you guys are mixing two different things. There's there's two major things. We talked about this yesterday. I'm not going to go into all of this again. A lot of things are very specific. So like right now, the thing that's hot is Conduit Energy. Right there, uh, Conduit Energy fucking sucks. Needlessly restrictive. There's almost no argument for it to be in the game. I've said that the whole time. But if you look past Conduit Energy, I feel like this argument gets tied into so many different systems. And I feel like people confuse the thing where it's like at the end of the patch, like, yeah, we're getting this in two months, but I want it now kind of thing. I feel like the sentiment is that Blizzard people knew that that would be what you wanted when the patch came out, but they intentionally held back specifically that for usually bad arguments, like trying to increase game time metrics or something like that. When they release a system at a patch, if they want to increase subs, if they want to increase how long people play, that comes from making a better game. If they have a way to make their thing better from the beginning, I believe that they would do it. I think they've messed up a lot. Like the legendary vendor, the corruption vendor, all of those things, I don't think those were things that they intended on putting in the game. I think those were things, they, they weren't like, oh, well, people will want this, but we'll just have them play a little bit and then we'll add it later. I don't think so. I, I think they really thought that the system would work on its own and they were wrong. And it happens a lot. And you can't, at a certain point, you have to say that, yeah, they probably haven't done a very good job with that. But I, I, I really don't think they go into these patches and they intentionally nerf their content for how good it could be for nefarious reasons to make content later. I think at the in the middle of patches and near the end of patches, there's clear things that need to happen. And instead of putting them in a major patch, they wait a month or two to put it in. I think that happens. 
Uh, but I, I do, I do not think that they, and I know it's unpopular. I know you guys disagree. I know community people disagree with that. I think Blizzard's made a lot of mistakes. They messed up. I criticize them constantly, but that specifically, I feel like is, is a uh, very out of touch. Like I, I just, I feel like, I feel like that argument, which is true for like probably a small amount of mechanics is usually attributed to everything that they eventually make better or change with the argument that they knew it from the beginning and they didn't do it on purpose. And I, I don't know too much about game development and I don't pretend to, or say things like that. I just don't, I don't think that that's actually what they do. I think the people who work at Blizzard, are they understaffed? Uh, almost certainly. In fact, I think that might be their biggest problem, especially in the develop per, a few development departments. Uh, but I, I don't think that they're hamstrung enough by whatever evil corporate entity that, you know, people think Activision is to the point where they're intentionally sandbagging their content constantly to make it better eventually for content. I, I don't. I think those game devs care about their job. I think they've made mistakes. Um, I think it would be better if 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 they had more funding and resources and more devs, all those things. But I don't think the devs who work there are either incompetent or or intentionally sandbag their products. That's all. But I, I know I know that's very unpopular with a lot of people. But that's exactly how I feel about that. <laughs>